deaths. And nearly 45,000 people have recovered from the virus across the state. It comes as barber shops, salons, and spas prepare to reopen Monday with safety measures in place. Can and bottle return centers will also reopen tomorrow. The state estimated that $65 million worth of containers that have not been returned. Kids, coaches and camp counselors are also gearing up for the return of summer camps and school sports tomorrow. And it was a busy night for bars and restaurants in downtown Detroit. Last night was the first Saturday after restrictions were lifted. 7 Action News reporter Rudy Harper has a look at the guidelines keeping people safe. It's a very busy Saturday night. We are just a week into restaurants offering dine-in services. There is a welcome buzz to this new normal. It's different. As Detroit restaurants reimagine how to serve customers. The mask um, is tough. Some are more heavily relying on carryout, while others are expanding out into sidewalks and even streets to ensure social distancing. You want to grab them, you haven't seen them in months, and you can't, so it's, it's a this movement. Sarah Farmer is the general manager at Detroit Sports Bar and Grill on Woodward in the heart of the city near the stadiums. They have a brand new patio, and she's also selling safety to ensure customers feel comfortable returning. And we'll do a temperature check for them on this one. Uh, it's about five to eight inches away from her. In the city's Greektown district, bar and restaurants are also following the reopening standards established by the state, which includes only 50% capacity and social distancing. Meantime, cities are trying to speed up the outdoor permit seating process to give customers more space and restaurants more revenue. Although some have looming concerns about a COVID-19 resurgence, it's not the case for Derek Kimbrough. It feels great to be on the patio. He feels confident enough to dine out. I'm happy. You're happy. I wouldn't even be here if I, if I feel, you know, intimidated or scared. Businesses are adapting and people tell us they're getting used to this new normal. Soon, a manager says this street will be shut down so they can expand their table service into the streets. In downtown Detroit, I'm Rudy Harper, 7 Action News. Well, protests continue across the country for the third weekend in a row. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Minneapolis, where George Floyd was killed, for a rally at the Minnesota Vikings Stadium and a march through the streets. In Chicago, demonstrators marched in the Loop area, calling for an end to racism. And in Los Angeles, volunteers painted Black Lives Matter on the road at Hollywood and Vine. In Atlanta, the police chief is off the job, stepping down after an African-American man was shot and killed by police officers Friday in a parking lot of a Wendy's. ABC's Rena Roy explains what led up to the shooting. Authorities in Georgia are scouring through videos of a violent struggle that turned deadly outside of Wendy's in Atlanta Friday night when officials say police shot and killed 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks after he allegedly resisted arrest. I don't want anyone in any circumstances to rush to any form of judgment. It's very easy to do in these cases. On either side, we realize there's a tremendous amount of emotion. Officers were called to the parking lot around 10.30 p.m. with complaints of Brooks asleep in his car blocking the drive through Police claim he failed a sobriety test and that when they tried to arrest him, he resisted and was able to grab an officer's taser. In this surveillance video, you can see him running away, then appearing to point the taser at the officers. At that point, the Atlanta officer reaches down and retrieves his weapon from his holster discharges it, strikes Mr. Brooks there on the parking lot, and he goes down. Today, Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields stepping down after calls for her resignation as protesters demand police reform and racial justice. Chief Shields has offered to immediately step aside as police chief so that the city may move forward with urgency in rebuilding the trust so desperately needed throughout our communities. Demonstrators gathering near the fast food restaurant, their rally cries even louder now. It fueled a fire, a worse fire. We've been doing all this pro peaceful protesting, and in the midst of that, you guys are still killing us. Meanwhile, cities all over the U.S. are seeing their third weekend of mass protests over the death of George Floyd. Tensions rising in places like Nashville and Seattle, where demonstrators have seized control of some areas, claiming them as autonomous zones. 
The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is working with Atlanta's district attorney's office to determine if improper force was used, but the mayor of Atlanta says she does not believe the shooting was justified and is calling for the officer to be fired. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And back here at home, protests in downtown Detroit will move to another level this coming Saturday. The group Detroit Will Breathe has been protesting every day at 4 o'clock. During yesterday's demonstration, they announced plans for a public tribunal on po police brutality against protesters Saturday. The group is calling on any protester who was arrested or ticketed to participate. A location for the gathering has not yet been announced. Well, this peaceful protest was held Saturday in Ann Arbor. Organizers say their goal is to strengthen and amplify their movement's voice in response to the death of George Floyd. The group is also calling for police accountability and reform, including the defunding of police departments. No, don't eliminate the whole budget, but limit about how much money that they do have. Give more power to the community. and It sparked back up everything that I had seen prior to the years before. I had been out here four years ago protesting after Philando Castillo's death. And like, just to see that again, it was just a replay of Eric Garner. And it's just like, nothing has changed. Saturday's event also included a voter registration drive. And more protests are scheduled today across Metro Detroit. That includes a Black Lives Matter solidarity run at Detroit's Palmer Park this morning at 10. There's an I Have a Dream protest car cruise from Detroit to Pontiac. It begins at noon on Grand River at 4th Street near Cass Tech High School. This afternoon at 2, there will be a walk for social justice at Clarkston's Depot Park. And in Trenton tonight at 6, there will be a Black Lives Matter rally in Elizabeth Park. We're open Detroit. The Royal Oak Farmers Market is bringing its Sunday antiques market back today. 7 Action News reporter Jennifer Ann Wilson is live at the market with a look at what's happening there. Good morning, Jennifer Ann. Good morning, Simon. Last time I was here on a Sunday, there were very different types of green colors I was looking at. It was vegetables and now the farmer's market is sticking to Saturday. Antiques markets are back and look at this beauty right here from the 1970s. This is from Craig, whose business is ought to be. And uh, welcome back to the antique market. Thank this is you. exciting. Thank you. Yeah, that is a wooded chair from the 50s. It's called a strap chair. It's wonderful with a frame. It's got a, a wrought iron frame to it and it actually rocks. Oh, wow. It's a beautiful chair. Yeah, beautiful really chair. beautiful. And you've got a, a variety of items. How would you classify some of the antiques that you have here? Well, we like to bring something for everybody. So I have man things, like I have these antique tins here. This is actually a really cool piece. It's a rare, um, it's for a doctor. So you would put this on a license plate on your car. Oh. And it's really old. It's probably from like the 30s, I would say. Okay. So that's a really cool piece. Yeah, really neat. And then are these placemats or what is that? These you could use for placemats, serving, whatever you want, because they're heat proof and, you know, they're really great for serving. Okay. I, I like to bring a lot of things that people can use, because today, especially with the kids, the younger yes. kids, they like things they can use as opposed to just decorative things. Functional art yeah. in some so ways. Yeah, so I have bowl sets, I have, you know, all kinds of things like that. This is a really wonderful piece. This vase is from 1937. Wow. Yeah, it's a really wonderful piece. And I have some heron pieces that are really fabulous. These are English 